all right welcome back to another video and a new raspberry pi just launched and everyone is talking about it those who have had the pre-release um units have already have their videos up and everyone is super excited about it so here are my thoughts of course i don't have a unit because i'm sitting here in india and products usually take two or three months to arrive um to our local retailers and uh, i was not at the pi day celebration so those who were there got it as a giveaway or bought it i don't know exactly remember how that went down but a few people have there and there are great reviews online that you can go ahead and check it out i'll leave a few in the links um but for now let's go ahead to my thoughts on the pros and cons and uh, not really the cons something i'm just calling it the uh point uh you know kind of that makes me feel uneasy about uh the new raspberry pi and you know just makes me feel it was a little bit more better but the truth is if those cons were resolved it would not be a incremental upgrade it would not be the raspberry pi 3 b plus it would have been the raspberry pi 4 uh so those points are can, can be neglected for this release again so let's go i will go into the detail of why i think so so the pros first uh it has got a 1.4 gigahertz cpu so that's 200 megahertz per core which is a lot of improvement in terms of performance uh for an incremental update to a board uh it's basically the same cpu it's the bcm2837 but uh the issue with the the issue with the previous version even a lot of us faced was it did overheat quite a bit uh, without a uh, proper thermal uh, you know dissipation heat sink or something like that but now they have kind of solved this problem for better uh, and that is the whole sock design the whole product has changed and it's a new uh, sock uh, as an uh, as a product it's the BCM2837B0 so um it's basically the same it, except for the uh, plastic cover the plastic or the ceramic uh, package it's now packaged uh, it has a metal shroud over the cpu so that means the shroud itself can dissipate a lot of heat and uh, if you add another heat sink over it it will dissipate even more heat uh, even better so that's actually very cool uh that's something that i really like and uh, the way they went the next thing is also something that i really like uh is the power management i see so previous models of the raspberry pi 3 that uh, as far as i know did not have a pmu or a power management unit as such they were just simple uh switch mode power supplies uh and there were there wasn't any logic component to it so the power management i see uh, gets uh, it all in and you have smart power management and uh, uh it it's a bit more efficient not a whole lot um but what i really think is would be cool for this new power management i see chip which is the mxl7704 uh is that if we could have um some some way to collect data out of that that chip and uh, because many of the power management chips that are available uh, can uh, can provide data such as power consumption live details on power consumption um and voltage in cpu voltage and all of that stuff from the pmu directly instead of probing the cpu or any other method so that would be cool if there would be some sort of an interface built into the newer raspberry releases that allows us to do that uh, the second part is the new wifi chip so that's again an amazing thing is that the new wifi chip now supports uh, 802.11ac uh, so that means it is a 5 gigahertz wifi compatible chip it's by cypress it's not the older broadcom chip so uh, i think that's really good and since that metal shroud that has the raspberry pi logo on it and that's great because with the previous wifi chip it was the naked silicon just face down uh, and it had the camera flash is- issue with it so if you are streaming something and someone came and took a photo of your raspberry pi um yeah uh, the internet would get disconnected for a bit there and you will have issues next part is poe or power over ethernet a lot of people have been asking about it and they provided it the feature is great the implementation not so good uh, we'll talk about it in the cons or the a points um and then we have this stuck to the video core 4 again it's not a new chip it's just a revision on the older chip uh, so they did stuck to the video core 4 platform and i really like it because 
that's the only open documented GPU platform uh, and not necessarily the only one that has the open source GPU drivers, a lot of them do have, but it doesn't need to be reverse engineered, it's actually open documented and Eric Anhalt actually got the whole thing to work with Mesa. So that's pretty good and that stays for now. Uh, now comes the eh point or the things uh, not so good. Uh, it's still on one gigabyte of RAM and that's the issue with the SOC itself. Uh, as many of you know, they didn't really change the uh, SOC platform all that much from the original Raspberry Pi to the Raspberry Pi 3B plus it still is the to BCM283X platform, so BCM2835 is the original one, clocked at 700 megahertz or 1 gigahertz, depending upon the product. The BCM2836 was the original uh, SOC on the Raspberry Pi 2, and the BCM2837 is on the Raspberry Pi 3. So they are basically the same thing, and one thing they are, they are limited in quite a different way, but one thing they are limited is in the memory or RAM capacity the memory controller cannot handle more than one gigabyte of RAM. Now there are some tricks that you can get 1.5 gigabytes, uh, gigabytes of RAM in there and Samsung has done it on older phone using the same um, platform but um, that's about it officially it's just one gigabyte of RAM so until or unless uh, the, they come with some very very uh, neat tricks uh, or change the platform altogether they're staying with one gigabytes. Uh, and that's kind of a downer for a 64-bit quad core so CPU running at 1.4 gigahertz now. Um, yeah. So ZRAM, ZRAM the heck out of it if you want to compile something big. Um, again, still on the uh, 283x platform. Uh, that also limits the uh, the USB capabilities because it's a single bus of uh, USB 2.0. Uh, and that's about 480 megabytes per second and that also limits the gigabit ethernet capability so see how i did not um, add the gigabit to the pros list though it's not truly a gigabit ethernet it's just 300 megabytes per second it's better than uh, megabit ethernet so it's not 100 megabytes it's 300 megabytes but it's not a complete implementation of a gigabit ethernet so uh, if I was using it as a NAS, I would actually not do that because that would be limiting in quite a lot of ways. But for people who have a 100 megabit um, home network, that's fine. But a lot of people have moved to a gigabit Ethernet and a lot of the products, a lot of other dev boards can uh, really provide a full gigabit Ethernet even over USB. Like some of them have uh, USB 3.1 or 3 ports that have a 5 gigabit uh, limit. So you can actually have a gigabit hard drive, a USB 3 hard drive and a gigabit ethernet and not saturate that uh, speed. So yeah, the gigabit ethernet uh, implementation, I could have done without that. The PoE implementation. So PoE is not really built into the board. There are four um, pins sticking out right after the GPIO pins end and that's actually the PoE pins coming from the LAN port and right out. So what they plan to do is have Pi hat on top of the um, on top of the Raspberry Pi and what that does is and what that does it it takes those four pins uh, and has some sort of uh, PoE uh, power management stuff there you know, converts it to the correct voltage and then feeds them down the GPIOs. Um, so that's that. If you want PoE, you would still need a mezzanine, but that mezzanine is not PoE, like it, it doesn't have the whole implementation of PoE. So you, you, you would need a Raspberry Pi 3B plus and that mezzanine to get PoE on the Raspberry Pi. In my opinion, a better uh, implementation would have been to have the whole PoE just on the mezzanine um, and then maybe some way get the ethernet back to the raspberry pi i don't know but uh, i would have liked the whole implementation to be on the raspberry pi or the whole implementation to be on the uh, on the uh, raspberry pi hat but um, that's not how it is and uh, the third limitation or the f point is it's still a 10 watt plus uh, board or a sock so it consumes a lot of power uh, now 10 watts might not seem as much 
but uh, similarly powered SOCs like the one on the Dragon Boat, the 410C uh, or the 410E uh, SOC actually is around 3.8 to 4 watts and um, the ROC 64 I think is about 5 to 8 watts. Um, yeah, so a bit more on the power consumption side, but more or less again all of the cons as I said are related to the BCM2837 platform being extremely old and uh, it's an engineering marvel um, as such to get it to get such an old platform to run 64-bit uh, cortex a53 cores uh, and that's a thing that we all should applaud but there definitely needs to be a SOC platform change um, and we'll see how it goes so hopefully we also get a new gpu once once the uh, raspberry pi 4 comes out because broadcom actually have after all the fans they did deny there's no video core 4 but they do have a video core 4 sorry a video core 5 uh, gpu in the works that is enabled on mesa so that's pretty neat uh, but i guess that's about it for today's episode um, would I recommend uh, upgrading all your Raspberry Pi 3s to the B plus? Uh, not necessarily if you're only if you're having power consumption issues, and the sometimes the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 can give that low power error even if you are feeding it from a 4 amp power supply. But um, yeah, I I don't think that should happen anymore. Apart from that, if you have a Raspberry Pi 2 or an older Raspberry Pi, uh, that should work pretty well. Uh, but apart from that. You know, if you want to buy a new one, it's a good, good, good board. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.